we have the national form maths added value unit paper two. Uh, just like paper one, this is from the practice paper on the Knightswood Academy website. So if you Google Knightswood Academy National Formats practice paper, it's the first hit that comes up on Google. Have a go at the questions and check your answers. So here we are, part two. There are four problem solving marks on this paper. In order to pass overall, you must score at least two out of four on those problem solving marks. So it doesn't matter if overall you're getting 25, 26, 30 out of 39, you must get two of the four problem solving marks. If you don't, you do not pass. All right, let's talk through the questions. Question one, solve algebraically the equation 6x minus three equals 4x plus seven. So, what we're trying to do here is to get the x's on one side and the numbers on the other side of the equation. So if I ever subtract three here and I add three onto that, I get zero, which basically means the minus three disappears. But if we add three to one side, we must add three to the other side. So on this side, we get seven, add three is 10. Then again, we want x's on the left-hand side, preferably. So subtract four x from both sides. Again, as it's an equation we can, and it's balanced, we can do the same thing to both sides. So here we have 2x. Here we're just left with a 10. That's why we're subtracting 4x to get rid of this 4x here. Uh, your teacher might have said change side, change sign. So here the negative 3 moves across and becomes plus, which is where the plus 10 comes from. 4x moves across, becomes negative. 6x minus 4x is 2x. And 2 times the value of x is 10, so the value of x is 5. Question number two. The work surface is made from a semicircle and a rectangle as shown below. Calculate the area of the work surface. So it's basically a composite area question. We have a rectangle and a semicircle. Uh, you could also have a, an area of a triangle in this question. We need to know how to find the area of a triangle as well. It's a half the base times the height. So you're going to get a combination of a rectangle, a triangle, and a semicircle or a circle in your test. So here, area of the rectangle is 40 by 70, length times breadth, just 2,800. And your problem solving mark here, that's what this hashtag is, they call them hashtag marks. Your problem solving mark comes from knowing it's a composite area question and also identifying that the radius is 20. Why is the radius 20? Well, down here, this line is 40. So this line, which is also the diameter of the semicircle, is 40, and therefore the radius is 20. So some sort of indication you're doing a composite area question and identifying that that is 20 gets you your hashtag mark. After that, area of a circle is pi times radius squared, but we have a semicircle, so I'm just going to do half of that. So it'll be half multiplied by pi and multiplied by 20 squared. And I have just used 3.14 for pi there. I could have used the pi button on the calculator. That would give me a slightly higher answer. I'm just using the rounded version. So then the total area is the area of A plus the area of B, which comes out as 3,428 centimeters squared. So I'll work out area of shape A, area of shape B, add them together. Number three, another question with a hashtag mark here. Scott is constructing a fence with posts and rails as shown below. So if there are two posts, there are six rails. If there are three posts, there's the extra post there. There are an extra six rails, so it'll be th three posts and 12 rails. If there are four posts, there'll be another six rails, be 18. A fifth post will be another six again, that'll be 24 and so on. So we can fill in the table. And we'll notice that it's going up by six each time. Part B, problem solving mark. Create a formula to calculate the number of rails R if you know the number of posts P. So the number of posts is increasing by one and the number of rails is increasing by six each time. So I'm looking at these numbers here. 
I'm just making sure they increase by six, which they do. And I say to myself, which times table increases in sixes? That's the six times table. So then I know part of the formula is going to be multiplied by six. So I've just filled in at the start, the number of rails is six times the number of posts. But it isn't know, is it? Because here the number of rails is six, but the number of posts is two. Six times two would be 12. But I only want six. Here, three times six would be 18, but I only want 12. Four times six would be 24, but again, we've only got 18. So here, I've got the number of rails, but here on top, I've written the six times table. So the number of rails is actually six less than the six times table. So it'll be six times the number of posts, but then we've got to subtract six because 12 takes six is six. 18 subtract six is 12. 24 subtract six is 18 and so on. So the formula would be R equals six P minus six. Plus you use the formula. You must use the formula. You can't just write down the answer. You've got to show that you're using the formula to calculate how many rails there would be between 52 posts. So let's just say, remember P is how many posts we have. So the number of rails would be six times 52, subtract six, just substituting it into this formula up here, which is 312 subtract six, which is 306 rails. Again, you must use the formula there. That's why you're being asked to do the formula so you can work out how many rails you'd need if there were a lot of posts. That's the whole point of working out the formula. Number four, a speed distance time question, but it is quite tricky. So looking for the key information here, we have 23 miles, we have 50 minutes, but what's the average speed in miles per hour? So I've got minutes, I need to turn minutes into hours. So it says miles per hour, not miles per minute. So how much of an hour is 50 minutes? Well, 50 minutes, is almost an hour, but in terms of whole hours, I would have 50 minutes out of 60. That'd be my fraction of an hour. So I'd have 50 sixtieths or five sixths. We could cancel there. So I'm just using the calculator 50 divided by 60, 0 0.8333333. I would keep that answer there in my calculator and I would do. Speed is distance divided by time, so 23 divided by the time in hours. So 23 divided by 0 0.8333333. Well, just type in 23 divided by answer, ANS, just keeps the answer that was on the screen. Comes out as 27.6 miles per hour. So again, what do we need to do that's different here? We need to turn the minutes into hours. To do that, we divide by 60 because there are 60 minutes in an hour. Question five. The end of a ridge tent forms an isosceles triangle and is shaded below. The base of the triangle is 160 centimeters and the sloping height is 200 centimeters. Calculate the vertical height of the tent. So keyword here is isosceles. If I didn't spot that, we'd have real trouble doing this question. If it's isosceles, that means this side and this side are equal. We'll have a line of symmetry down the middle. So I'm going to use that line of symmetry to create two right angle triangles. So the sloping side would still be 200. This 160 is cut in half, so this part here would be 80. That's a right angle. So spotting that, splitting it up into a right angle, knowing that I can use Pythagoras will get me my problem solving mark. You need to be able to do that. Then after that, I'm just going to use Pythagoras. It's on the formula sheet on the front page. A squared or B squared equals C squared, which basically means the short side squared or the other short side squared equals the long side squared. Substitute in h squared plus 80 squared equals 200 squared square 80 square 200 we've got a calculator remember guys use the calculator subtract 6400 from both sides 
or if you like, move that over and sub it becomes negative, so take it away. And remember, h squared is 33,600, so we must square root it at the end. And I've rounded to one decimal place, and I've said that in the bracket. So the height there would be 183.3 centimetres. Now, some of you might have just been told, if you're working out a shorter side, it's just a subtract. So fair enough if you have. So 200 squared subtract 80 squared. Let the calculator do it for you. That's 33,600. So we're just at this line here. Then we square root, and there's the answer. Number six, it gives us some lengths and also asks for an angle and a right angle triangle. That will be a soccer tour question. So how do we do soccer tour questions? Well, here's the angle. Opposite that angle, we have the opposite side. Opposite the right angle, we have the hypotenuse. The third side is the adjacent side. Adjacent means next to, it's next to the angle and also the right angle. After that, we need to decide if we're using sin, cos, or tan. So we write down the word Sokotoa. I know the opposite side, I know the adjacent side. So I tick off all the O's and all the A's, and the one with the double tick is the one that I'm going to use. So now tan X is opposite over adjacent. If you can't remember this, this is on your formula sheet on the front page. So tan x will be, how big is the opposite side? 2.0 over the adjacent side, which is 0 0.7. Now I could work out what 2 divided by 0 0.7 is, but there's no need to do that at all. I'm just going to leave it like that just now. So I know tan x, I want to know x. I want to know what the angle is, not tan of the angle. So I need to get rid of this tan here. So I need to do inverse tan. What I'm what I'm doing is, if you like, I'm untanning it. So we do inverse tan or tan to the minus one or shift tan or second function tan on the calculator and open up your bracket inside two divided by 0 0.7. Press your equals button and there's the angle there at 70.7 degrees. Last question, question seven. Draw a set of coordinate axes on the grid below and plot the points negative 4, negative 2, 1, minus 2, and 3, 2. So negative 4, negative 2. So negative 4, remember, it's always along, then up or down, guys. So along to negative 4 is 4 to the left. 1, 2, 3, 4. And then negative 2 is 2 down. 1, 2. Put a dot, put the letter next to it. You've got to put the letter next to it. E, 1 minus 2, so from the centre, from the origin, 1 along, which is 1 to the right, and 2 down. C, 3 comma 2, from the origin, from the, the start of the middle of the graph, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, there we go. Plot a fourth point D to form a parallelogram. What is a parallelogram? A parallelogram is a pushed over rectangle. So, what do we know about pushed over rectangles? We know that this side here will be the same length as this side here. So from A to B is 5. And the distance from C to D will also be 5. Therefore, I know that's my point D. So I'm not doing any sort of crazy random guesses. I'm using a bit of information here. It's going to be the same length as this one. So I'm just counting 5 back from there. And write down the coordinates of point D. That's 2 to the left and 2 up, so it'll be negative 2, comma 2. And once you've done all that, that is the end of the test. Go back through, double check it. Make sure you have your hashtag marks, because if you don't get 2 out of 4, you're not passing the test.